What up, y'all? It's your boy, Martin, a.k.a. The Boxing Purist. Welcome once again to the Truth and Absolute channel, where I speak the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me, good God almighty. All right, y'all, now, it's been a week, man, and honestly, man, it's been a, it's been rather fun with the whole riot season. Mr. Turkish Ali, Turkey, whatever Ali his name is, um, stepping into the boxing game. So before anything, yo, if you're new to the channel, welcome to my channel. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you hit that like button. Make sure that you go down to the comments section and start arguing with somebody. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. We just love talking boxing around here. Oftentimes, myself is even included in the comments, man. We love to talk boxing for the most part. All my dudes here and gals keep it real cool when we're talking boxing. So don't be scared. Jump up in the conversation. Test your boxing knowledge skills, yo. So anyway, so the story that's really getting me because it's really been on my mind since the card happened um, in in L.A. at the BMO Stadium, obviously with uh, Turkish Al Ali. I always forget the dude's name. You guys already know there's a few names that just don't register. You know what I'm saying? I repeat them in silence 20 times. I hop on here. I have no clue what the name is. I'm going to call him the Turk. Turk, Turk, Turk. OK, anyway, so at first and I said this in the past, man, he stepped on the scene and it was like a uh, like a Christmas gift. He started right away talking about all the m fights that he wanted to make because the guy has the money to make almost every fight that he wants to make. It's appealing to boxing fans. Right. So now I want to say that when he entered, you know, he had a few fights on his mind. However, just because you got the money to put up the fights, it doesn't mean that every boxer, every promoter, every network, every team is going to jump at it just because you're offering them a high amount of money. Now, in this case, in this case right here, it's kind of it's kind of uh, it's kind of sweet, if you ask me. OK, it's kind of sweet. You see, I'm the type, man, that, you know, when I read headlines, when I read certain stories, when I read all of those things, some of them, you could tell they're so damn fabricated. It's literally indoctrination to convince the casual boxing fan of something. Now, news outlets do this with all walks of life, but simply right here, I'm talking about boxing. So like for me, for example, when they're calling a certain fighter a face of boxing and we all know good and damn well that he is not, it tends to bug me. Now, mind you, I don't have a dog in this race, right? I don't get a dollar with or without the guy that I'm thinking is not deserving of that title being up top. It's nothing to me. But it's the truth in absolute channel. There's certain things that, you know, that they tug at you a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm getting at, right? Obviously, we know that Turk, Turkey Ali, you know what I'm saying, came in here and thought he was going to make the biggest fights. You know, the fights that the promoters here were not putting together. He figured he was going to come and put them together in the USA. Now, the BMO Stadium. Although the card was super, super stacked, I'm talking about the most, each one of those fights, the last five fights leading up to the main event, <laughs> could have held their own card, right? But this is the thing about it. Somehow, with all of those fights in the lineup, a concert by Eminem, a car giveaway, all of these things, somehow, it wasn't quite the event they expected it to be. From what my understanding, the day before, there were still tickets available. There was still tickets available. Now, mind you, I'm going to be real with y'all. Crawford is not the one that sold the majority of the tickets. That was probably Eminem. After Eminem, it was probably Isaac Pitbull Cruz or Andy Rees. One of the two. One of the two, man. The other fighters, they had people there to see him as well. But ultimately, Turkish Ali, Turkey Ali, whatever his name is, try to make this card sound great, which it was a great card. Ultimately, he was trying to set up potential future bouts with other stars in the game. None other than... Saul Canelo Alvarez. Now, one thing that I didn't like about the Turk, dude, because now Canelo already came out and was saying like, yeah, you know, Turk texted me talking about this is what we're offering for Crawford, this and that to Canelo's response was pretty much like, yo, first of all, if we do business, we're not going to do it your way. We're going to do it my way. And right now I'm focused on Edgar Berlanga 100 percent. I'm not going to talk about another fighter, which, again, one of the reasons I like Canelo's character is for that. You know, how disrespectful would it be if Canelo would have been like, yeah, yeah, I'll take the Crawford fight, not even having fought Berlanga yet. Now, a lot of y'all extreme casuals are going to say, oh, it's because he knows Berlanga is not a challenge. Oh, it's stop with all of that. Stop with all of that. OK, he's not going to do that. He's not going to overlook everyone, anyone. Of course, Canelo is confident that he's going to be Edgar Belanga, but he's not positive. No fighter is positive, no matter what they say, right? So 
We got Canelo on this side and Turk on this side. Canelo hasn't even fought yet. Turk is at his own event and he's all we also trying to promote future fights that can happen. Now, I get we all want to see some of these fights. The Terrence Crawford, Virgil Ortiz, for example. Virgil needs to win this Saturday in order for that to happen. Mr. Turk was saying all that kind of stuff about Crawford fighting Virgil Ortiz and they couldn't get Canelo before Crawford even stepped inside that ring. So I don't know about y'all, but although he has the money to put up, it looks like Turk Ali, someone needs to teach him a thing or two. Don't go trying to make big fights because all, right away people are going to think that you're setting up nobodies for these guys to fight in order to make the big fights happen. Well... So, you know, Turk Ali, he comes over here to the U.S. Everyone welcomes him with open arms. Even promoters like Oscar De La Hoya, who in the beginning weren't necessarily too fond of Turk Ali. He was pretty much saying, no one's going to come to my country, make money with our fighters, this, this and that. And then here goes De La Hoya, BMO Stadium, Los Angeles, De La Hoya's hometown. And he's handing a plaque over to the Turk Ali. So, again, let's get back with that. You know, we're opening up to the, all the arenas. He's setting up all the fights. Riot season written all over the WC belts. All of a sudden, he gets a plaque in his own. That was really, really whack. Imagine David Stern creating an award just for himself. That was super, super whack. Little by little, I wasn't liking this. I wasn't liking it, right? So, he's used to coming to the USA and getting a red carpet rolled out. Then... Mr. Turk Ali, or how some of these other people, I'm not going to call him His Excellency. Who the hell is he for me to call him that? They could call him that in his country out here. He ain't nothing but Turk, if he's lucky. So he runs into a roadblock, and oh my gosh, is this so, so sweet. It's so, so sweet. Now, before I say anything, I'm just going to say, I'm about to speak on Canelo Alvarez. Just to make it clear, I love Canelo. I think he's a great fighter. He's had an amazing career. He's not my all-time favorite fighter, okay? Let me just throw that out there now before y'all call me names. Turk Ali ran into a damn roadblock with his plans here in the U.S. And that roadblock is called Saul Canelo Face of Boxing Alvarez. Turk himself is proving that Canelo is the face of boxing. And all these hating broadcasters, they also prove that Canelo is the face of boxing. Now, how do I know that? How do I know that? I know everything. He thinks he knows everything. No, has nothing to do with that. But it's easy once you look at everything that's going on. Why is everybody pressing Canelo to take certain fights, but they're not pressing certain, no one else? Why is Mr. Turkish Ali... So, so focused on making a fight with Canelo that he gives him two options, David Benavidez and Terrence Crawford. Upsets Turk so much that Turk, like a 15-year-old, hops on Twitter and says that Canelo is scared of challenges because he lost to Dimitri Bavol. All these things just tell me one thing. Mr. Turk, you're used to getting your way. You ran into a roadblock here in the States. Canelo pretty much said, bro, I don't need your money. Good luck trying to make other huge events without my help. Because let's be real, everybody. You may dislike Canelo. You may like Canelo. You may not like the way that Canelo moves. But at the end of the day, Turk came out here with the intentions of making fights with Canelo involved. Now, I see Turk out there saying he's going to plan for the rematch between Usyk and Fury in October. It looks like on that undercard, it's going to have William Zapata versus uh, Shakur Stevenson, which is going to be a great fight. Um, David's already put it out there that when he fights the winner of Better Beef and Bavol, that he wants to try to take Canelo's date. All these things going around. And then you even got showbiz. I know you guys are all familiar with showbiz. Now, let me just say once again, I always got to say this. I admire Showbiz. He built a great channel. He's obviously in partnership with a lot of people now because everything that he's kicking, everything that he's giving away. But even Showbiz himself will not say Turk's name without saying his excellency behind it. Right. So all these people, they just roll over and Canelo's like, no, absolutely not. Now, of course, when I was speaking on showbiz, he made a video pretty much saying that Canelo's not at fault for not accepting an offer for Crawford because he's focused on Berlanga. But showbiz gets in there and throws in there that he thinks that Canelo's scared of David Benavidez, a.k.a. 
used to be known as the Mexican monster before 175, right? He might continue his reign as a monster. We're yet to know because the guy only fights once every year, year and a half. So we'll see. But the star power is held by Canelo. Turk is not pressing any other fighter. There's not no other fighters upsetting him. He thought he was going to come make an offer to Canelo and Canelo was going to take the offer and run with it. But guess what? And then there's this narrative out there, right? Crawford goes out there and says that if I'm such an easy fight, why not take the 100, you know, the money involved, this and that, this and that. This is what people still don't understand about what Canelo's doing. Canelo is going to do stuff his way from now on. His way. It's not the opponent in Benavidez and Crawford, and it's a smart, savvy business move. See, right now, Canelo is picking who he wants to fight. He chose to fight Jaime Munguia. Mexico versus Mexico was the title. Bam, he made money. This upcoming fight, September 14th, with Edgar Belanga. They're selling it as Mexico versus Puerto Rico, even though Edgar Belanga is from New York City. Whatever. Boom, boom. Another event. Canelo picked it. He made it however he wanted to make it. Canelo's calling his own shots right now is what he's doing, and that's what he wants to do. So when he sees a guy come over that everyone's rolling over for and saying, this is what we offer, Canelo's like, first of all, first of all, I'm calling my own shots. And second, Canelo being a smart and savvy businessman, him and his team, he sees the demand from the fans for the Benavidez fight. Not really the Crawford fight. That one was just kind of spoken into existence because of Canelo and Terrence Crawford's status. But the Benavidez one is one that fans have been asking for. Now, in Canelo's eyes, David Benavidez doesn't do nothing for his legacy, nor for a big money fight, unless the other side is willing to put up the 150 to 200 million that Canelo wants because guess what without Canelo y'all tell me what are the big fight that's going to make millions and millions and millions of dollars uh Turk Ali could make other than Usyk versus Tyson Fury now those are heavyweights those got a whole countries backing them tell me what other fighter other fight that they could make without Canelo that's going to make that big big money Part of Turk's plans coming into the U.S. was to have Canelo on board. And yeah, together they would have made a lot, a lot of money. But I admire Canelo is standing his ground, standing as being his own boss and saying, yo, this is what it's going to be. I'm not going to fold down to you. And guess what, yo? I love it. I love it. Even if it wasn't Canelo, if it was someone else, even Tank Davis came out and is saying, you know, who is Turk? I mean, I, I don't agree with Tang saying that, you know, Turk is a promoter to B-side fighters that can't sell fights. <laughs> I, that's just kind of funny. But it, obviously, Tank Davis also sees something in Turk that he's not super down and cool with. You know, Tank has his little fan base. He could sell certain arenas, you know, fighting whoever as well. He does that. He's far from the face of boxing, let me tell you that. But nonetheless, he also sees it from the outside in like, yo, what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? Um... This situation, though, is going to wake up a lot of things in the sport. Right now, it seems quiet. Right now, it seems straight up and down. Okay, Turk and Canelo ain't going to work together. Let's see what happens from here. The way that that dude Turk carries himself, he's going to try to counter and make an even bigger fight. And I guarantee you, I don't want to say I guarantee you, but there's a huge possibility that he might be on board with the David Benavidez trying to make a fight on September 14th with that stack card. You know what I'm saying? The Canelo headliner, that card is also stacked, which is one of the good things from the Turk coming to the U.S. So we'll see what happens, man. We'll see what's going on. All we know is that Turkey Ali is very sour right now with Canelo Alvarez because he did not hop on board with him. And we'll see what he brings next, you know? And... Listen, this is the game of boxing. The guy had money. He came and did it. I'm going to watch his fights unless some crazy stuff starts happening that I'm like, nah, I ain't running with that promotional. I ain't running with dude. I'd rather not watch him. But for right now, I think things are about to get really, really interesting when you got the face of boxing and a guy that's trying to take over the sport of boxing in Turkish Ali. So let me know what y'all think, man. Drop a comment down below. Let's talk about this, man. Much love to y'all. God bless. Peace.